thanks again for rejoining us on the program this morning on ITV. Well, straight to our major talking point, which of course across the country, amongst Nigerians uh, in different parts of the world, is also the major talking point. The suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Walter Onogen. With me here, uh, erudite lawyers. I'd like to thank very specially Chief A.B. Thomas. Many thanks for joining us, A.B. Thomas. Thank you, and good morning to you as well. I also have with us in the studio, Barrister Dili Igbinidium. Barrister Dili Igbinidium, many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you so much. Hello, viewers. We expect uh, Andre Dehan to join us uh, in the course of the discussion. We have we guests here on time. Well, the legality of the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria has been the major talking Point. Let's set the foundation for this discussion. What is really the crux of this matter as it relates to the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria? Let me begin with you, Barista Ibithamos. <clears throat> well, the federal government is alleging that somebody wrote a petition dated 8th January alleging that the suspended CJN has foreign currency accounts domiciled outside this country and that he did not fully disclose his assets to include those domiciled accounts abroad. The CCB, that is Code of Code of Buryu, received this alleged petition on the 8th, on the night, it was sent to the suspended CJ for his comments. On the 10th, they prepared a charge against him. My problem is the speed taking Nigeria's contest into perspective. You receive a petition on the 8th, on the night you said to the CJ and for his comments, who immediately replied and said, I forgot to declare this monies. On the 10th, you prepared a charge. That is the background. But if I may go further, my worry is that what ordinarily should have been a legal issue has become a political issue. Nigerians don't investigate within 24 hours. I repeat. Even when your brother is involved, you cannot investigate within 24 hours and get a report. Then the CJN replied on the night, and by 10th, you were preparing a charge. So, my own view of it is what do you think the ordinary man in the street will, look, will say? The reasonableness, the speed, of the whole allegation. Okay. It has now come to light that this petition was written by a former secretary of CPC, Congress, I don't know, for people, something, that merged with ACN to form APC. Okay. So, the CJN was now dragged before the CCT, okay. Code of Conduct Tribunal. Of course, many lawyers said, no, 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 you, you can't do this. One, the issue of the merit of the charge is a different issue. Two, the procedure, the procedure you are following is a different issue. Let's look at the procedure first. One, the Code of Conduct Bureau Act says 
when you get a petition, you have to investigate. And after investigating, you draw the attention of the petition of the person against whom the petition is written. Yeah. And by section 14 of that same act, it says when the person admits not to have added that particular item in his declaration. Mm. And if the CCB is satisfied, that shall be the end of the case. It shall not be referred to the CCB, uh, CCT. CCT. But in this case, everything took place like a concord plane. Okay, let, let, let me pursue the uh, Barrister Evie Thomas and uh, get uh, Barrister Dele Igminidio involved. Uh, Barrister Igminidio, the, the 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 concerns really is not about the merit of the case it's about the procedure are you also bothered about the procedure in handling this matter well um again this is a matter that uh, uh, is very unfortunate uh, ideally it should be a matter that should not even have a reason in the first place um, because you know when when there, there, there are expectations for everybody but there are higher expectations for certain levels and classes of people um, if you are a judicial officer you must expect that you are under greater scrutiny to comply with laws. There was a case where a, a judge was very upset with somebody in a traffic situation, um, got his police oddly to, to assault that person, and they put him in the boot of his car, and he drove him to the police uh, station. station. That judge was dismissed. But that is something that uh, any tout can do and we we'll probably get away with <laughs> it. And probably get away with it. So, um, amongst all the citizens of the country, judges are under greater scrutiny. That is why you don't see them in drinking places, you don't see them dancing in parties and all that. And more so, the alter ego of the judiciary, the chief justice of the federation. Now, I don't want to take sides on, on, on this point, but my, my take is that... Um, if you have a code of conduct you know, form, there are certain things that you will forget. He admitted that he forgot. He did not deny that those accounts do not belong to him. And he knows that as a serving officer, with all due respect, it is illegal for you to have those foreign accounts. That's number one. Number two, even if you have them, you must disclose your assets. The essence of disclosure is not to deprive you of your assets, but it is to ensure that um, they are able to benchmark when you are, when, what property you own when you assume that office and what property you now own at the point of exit. That's why you are asked to declare when you are entering and when you are leaving. So, um, but what has happened, happened. He admitted that he forgot. So, what would have been the next logical action to take. I think that is the issue. Now, um, once you realize at that level that you have contravened such a, such a serious infraction that affects you both legally and morally, you have a decision to make. The procedure, you know, um, which people quarrel with um, is that they, they, took, they took him to the Code of Conduct Tribunal. When they got to his office to serve in court process, out of respect for him, um, you know, the processes were not delivered to him personally. They were given to his assistant with a view to bringing it to his attention. But that now became a basis for objections. And who felt, ah, is it because we are respecting you? You know, now the Code of Conduct Tribunal is a special court set up for, for government officials to ensure that there's probity and accountability. It has its own powers. It's not like the regular high court. Um, it has its own procedure. It's not like the regular courts, which we are used to. It can take decisions ex parte. 
Now, don't forget that if you are in a government position and you are also being investigated, you can use that office to truncate every investigation that has been done, which was seen as what was happening. You know what I mean? And again, I'm not taking sides. I have to be... You, know, you, you, said, you said that before. <laughs> I said that before. Yeah. I have to repeat it, but I have to be transparent. Okay. Within two days, we had an ex parte order. I know people are quarreling now with ex parte orders. We had an ex parte order from the Federal High Court against the CC Code of Conduct Tribunal. We had another one from the National Industrial Court, ex parte. Say, don't do anything, don't do anything. So these are people felt, eh, if you can get two ex parte, we can also get an ex parte. So they went back to the Code of Conduct Tribunal and said, look, you know, we don't want the man removed at this point. We want him suspended to uh, allow for proper investigation. And the Code of Conduct Tribunal, in their wisdom, rightly or wrongly, that's a matter for debate, mm. gave the orders they gave. The order was served on the president. The president implemented the order. Mm. Now that 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 the reason obviously is to allow for investigation. Now, I I have I have taken the view and I continue to take the view that the moment these allegations surfaced, all that was required is to explain them. Nobody is witch hunting anybody. Explain. You know, um, for example, you have three million dollars allegedly in one account. Three million dollars that runs into billions of naira, I think. Um. It's also said that for the last 18 months, you haven't touched your... your and, and I say this most respectfully because we are all part of the Nigerian project. We are all part of the Nigerian dream. We, are, we, are, we must move forward. We all know that, um, with all due respect, corruption is too endemic in our system. It's too endemic. Nigeria is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. And with all due respect, we cannot say... Nobody can stand and tell me the judiciary has been spared, both in the process of appointment of judges, in the process of promotion of judges. You know, with all due respect, it's old boy network. You know, I know you scratch my back. I, you know me, help my son, help my daughter. So this is, this is part of the fight against corruption. This is part of the fight against corruption. In fact, that is why the president is very piqued, was very piqued at the fact that, you know, a simple arraignment had 35 senior advocates on one side. Mm. Apart from other lawyers who are not senior advocates, yeah. 35, they, they turned it into, into you know, a, a, a jamboree. Sorry, <laughs> they turned it into, into, into a jamboree. So, obviously, you know, um, and while that was going on, I mean, look at what happened at the Court of Appeal. And I say this with the greatest respect. I'm not taking sides, but I feel that there are things that we could have downplayed to reduce the tension. But in a way, it appeared as if the whole thing was hyped. At the Court of Appeal in Abuja, um, records were transmitted. The ruling of the CCT, which was being appealed against, was not in the record. The Court of Appeal stood the case down for the ruling to be to go and get it added. They added it. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not there. They waited. Eventually, okay, now let us, you know, argue. They also discovered they couldn't proceed. Okay, we are going to adjourn it, but in the interim, we now grant an interim order in the interim. Mm. So, again, don't forget, with all due respect, that this is no ordinary sort of, inqui sort of inqui inquisition or whatever we call it. Okay. You are dealing with a man who is at the helm of affairs of the judiciary. All the judges owe their allegiance to him, both at the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals. So, so you're saying that allegiance played on some of these uh, judgments? Uh, that, that, okay, let, the, let, let me pause you there. Let me you there. So I, again, I must emphasize yeah. that I'm not taking sides. No, 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 no. Your argument, we know where it is going to. By side, Thomas, I know you are eager to say something. But yes, I, please. I want, I want to, I want to uh, bring in you from this perspective, which is the um, ex parte order, which Mr. President relied on to suspend the uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria. There have been questions raised about how the order was gotten. There have been questions about who moved the motion. There have been questions <laughs> about the, um, the, 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 the expatriate order. The document wasn't signed by whoever moved the I mean, there have been questions how about- How I wish you would allow me to speak. Of course, Give me that's, time. that's why you're here. Before this crisis of CCB, hmm. 
every person in Nigeria who can read knows that all the appointments of the Mr. President have been lopsided. The President Onore has been the acting CJA of Nigeria longest in the history of Nigeria. When Justice Mohammed Mahmoud, the former CJA was going, he submitted the name of Onore and Tanko. Onore being the senior, but from the south, Onore was placed on acting capacity. After the names were submitted to the president. He never wanted Onore in the first instance. Onore after three months, according to the constitution. And the constitution says, if at the end of that three months we are not confirmed, you will be allowed to continue for another three months again if you are asked to be acting again. But after the second three months, it will pass over to the next person. To the next person. That was what God saw. And the president went on a sick leave to London. Before he came back, the three months was to elapse. The VP quickly submitted the name of Honoré to Senate, which quickly confirmed Honoré as CJN. That is the background story. Now, since then, the president has never been be comfortable that he is the head of executive from the north. Bukola Saraki, head of legislature from North Central. Then you have a Sultanan from judiciary. Now, if you look at why many lawyers are picked, they are many lawyers are angry. Many civilized Nigerians are angry. If you look at the way this petition came, I have given you dates. 8, 9, 10. Where has efficiency so come from in Nigeria? That you have 8, 9, 10 investigation already concluded. Now, what is the procedure of taking on any judicial officer? The Constitution spells it out clearly. It says when a judicial officer has committed a misconduct, misconduct is a very wide Spectrum. Spectrum. And the Court of Criminal Tribunal is a quasi criminal court. It's not a criminal court that can sentence you to imprisonment. No. It can only say vacate the office. Now, you are asking, like my lady friend was saying, the man was being suspended for investigation to take place. What investigation? When the man was in charge of court, a man already in charge of court, what is. What are you investigating again? It is only in Nigeria you take a man to court, then you go and begin investigation. It's only in Nigeria they see you with money. They say, no, you must account for that sort of money. The law is that you are presumed innocent until you are found guilty. But now you are guilty until you exonerate yourself. That is not the Commonwealth law. That's not the received law that we received. Now, if you see the reason why my little friend said 35, no, there were 48 senior advocates. It's a pity that I am not a senior advocate. And I'm not sorry. I'm not, it's not a pity because I don't want to. If I had to be a senior advocate, I would have left Benin. <laughs> don't go and join them. Because this pro the problem we are seeing right now is the head of one of the three organs of government. We have legislature, headed by Bukrasaki. We have executive, headed by Buhari. We have uh, judiciary, headed by Onore. We are seeing a situation where one arm of government is usurping the functions and positions of the judiciary. Was this man ever reported to an agency in line with the Constitution? On that section 292 of the Constitution. Was he? He was not. Now, how you are saying expert order? What expert order? Those who went to Federal High Court to procure expert order against the 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 Dalaji led a uh, criminal tribunal was honorable name there. He was not a claimant. 
It wasn't. People who were picked went to court as interested persons, as taxpayers. And they got the expert elder. If I were to be a judge, God forbid, I won't be one. If I were to be a judge, I will have granted such an expert order. But I will record the name of the person moving the order. That is the procedure in court. You list out the names of the parties. Then the, the lawyer moving the motion, you put his name. Where is the name of this person? In this one, the president is saying... Does, that, does that invalidate this order? From it does not invalidate it. Okay. Per se. Okay. But it makes it suspect. And in any case, whatever will happen to me, I'm ready. Let me tell you. How many substantive orders has the president received that he has acted upon? Eight federal high courts asked him to release Asuki. Did he obey them? The ones that asked him to release that chap from Eagle Land without Una, what's his name? Nadi Nadi Khan also. Did you obey? Why is it that he's not obeying ex parte of less than 24 hours? Please, please. Okay. We are destroying. Look, when the military take over, the only arm of government they don't touch is the judiciary. They suspend the constitution. They deal with whoever is the president, they remove him. They deal with those in the legislature, they remove them. They have never touched the judiciary. Why is this man doing this? The judiciary above the law. The judiciary is not above the law, okay. but it is the last hope of the common man. All right, let me pursue that. And because it's the last hope of the common man, mm. the president has received so many substantive orders from courts of competent jurisdiction. Mm. He has never obeyed anyone. Why is he obeying 24 hours? I'm not sorry. Less than two hours. Okay. okay. All right. Let me, let me pursue that by Sir Bithomo. If I must, I must, let me conclude this point. Okay. Femi Falana even said in his interview with channels that he, when this child was fired, he called the Attorney General of the Federation and said, why are you doing this? You know this charge cannot stand the test of trial because of the legal authorities pronounced upon by the same court of tribunal in the case of Ngajiwa against the Republic of Nigeria. The same court of court tribunal that has signed in late night as party for Buhari, they said, they said, you cannot bring a judge before us unless the judge has been sent to NJC. But I'm aware that the NJC will be meeting as an emergency meeting today. Okay. What are they going to meet for? What are you meeting for? I expect all judges in Nigeria to sit at home if they know what they are doing. Okay. Let, let, let me pursue the uh, finally by Sidebi Thomas. If you just join us, it's a TMI Monday. Of course, our uh, focus is on the legality of the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. We have erudite lawyers in the house, Barrister Ibi Thomas, who's been talking, and of course, uh, Barrister Dili Igbenidio. Barrister Dili Igbenidio, let me, let yes. me bring you in here. Thank you. Yeah. The fact that procedurally um, this case didn't, I mean, didn't meet set standards in terms of procedure, uh, isn't that something we should worry about? in terms of uh, developing a democracy based on the rule of law, equity, and justice? Well, um, frankly, I, I, I cannot but, you know, um, you know, lean in that direction to an extent, you know, to say that, um, yes, it is, it is worrisome for anybody in terms of the, 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 whole scenario however I, I would not I would not say that uh, speed um, the speed of the of the of the exercise uh, should now be a ground of appeal if I might put it like that and the reason is because um, uh, we Nigerians we are so used to things being done in a lethargic fashion that when there is some efficiency we begin to suspect it and it ought not to be so Yes, um, it would have been a different case if, you know, from what has been reported, if his lordship had denied those allegations. Then there would have been a need for extensive investigation. But in a situation where he not only admitted, but he said, look, 
I just forgot to declare this thing, you know. Yeah, they actually belong to me, but I, I forgot. Then I don't know what other investigation you want to, you know, carry on. Now, let me come, let's, let's step back a little bit to say that the, 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 uh, what's the word I should use now? I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully. This has thrown up the fact that we do not have security agencies in this country that are alive to their responsibilities. And I must say this with respect. It is the responsibility before it, somebody becomes a substantive, either chief justice of the federation or high public officer, there must be some investigation done, particularly by the Department of State Security Services. There's a special department there that does this investigation. This is the time for the president to, to, to deal with, particularly those who are responsible, because they ought to have done some investigation. In, in advanced democracies, before you, you assume such an office, you will be asked, are there things that, even by your handlers, by your own people, my, my God, are there things that you know you should tell us now that if it comes to light could potentially embarrass not only you but the government? Because imagine how we look in the eyes of the international community that the highest judge in our country has all these funds, you know, hidden in different places, which are unaccounted for. This is, this is my own worry because um, it's not so much of about an individual. Mm. It's about the failure of the system to have been able to detect this, to have been able to counsel. You mean that as, as CJ and all these 48 senior advocates now, at the time he was filling the code of conduct form, he couldn't get one senior advocate to say, look, you know, come and advise me on how, you know, this thing should be properly done. That's, those are my, you know, we, 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 we and, and I, I'm so sorry, I, I, I don't, I'm not taking sides. But Nigeria is the only country we all have. We always seem to believe that we are above the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Just, just do it. Just feel it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We cannot even look our, um, our superiors in the face and tell them when something is going wrong. Or when they've, or when they've done wrong. Or when they've done wrong. A, 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 we, we had a conversation about whether there should be state police or federal police ones in, 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 in here in Edo State. And a retired you know, top official of the police you know, talked about when he was commissioner of police and the governor called him and said, you know, arrest this person, arrest that person. And he knew he was wrong, but okay, just to satisfy the governor, he arrested that person and told him, okay, don't worry, we won't keep you here for too long. You know, um, and he said it perfunctorily. Perfunctorily. Because the man was the governor, he told you go and arrest somebody. As a, as a superior police officer, you didn't have the lever to tell him, look, <laughs> yeah, I this, is, this is wrong. <laughs> this is wrong. I can't do this. So when it was my turn to speak, of course, with all due respect, <laughs> I took him to the cleaners. <laughs> because such comments will just, will, will just come out yeah. because that's our way of doing things. Okay. And, and again, since this happened, I'm aware that many judges have been rushing to the Code of Conduct Bureau to, you know, uh, either feel or to remember, rectify, uh, rectify what they yeah, forgot to yeah, feel. Yeah. I mean, look, at, there's a judge that's been tried now in this country who had lots and lots and lots of money that were unaccounted for. Now, let me make, let me make the point about this accounting or non-accounting for money. My other friend had made a good point that, you know, the onus is on the, on the prosecuting authority to prove the illegality of funds. And that, that is our jurisprudence. But that, that's not, with all due respect, sir, that's not entirely correct. Our jurisprudence changed at a point when the Money Laundering Act and the EFCC Amendment Act and all that were promulgated to say that if you are found with, with money that is irreconcilable with your legitimate income, it's the onus is on you to explain the source of that income because this is a fact peculiarly within your knowledge. I mean, if you suddenly find me tomorrow with about 25 million US dollars in my house, uh, you can't expect the police to explain where I got the money from. You are me who owns the money, who is with the money, has to explain. That is now our law. Okay. That is why there is an issue. Ordinarily, you find a man with money, you have to explain. But now our law changed. When, because of terrorism, after this 9-11 and all the laws that were made, yeah. 
you must have legitimate income. If you have income that is unexplainable, that is irreconcilable, then it becomes your responsibility. Now, again, I have to emphasize, I am not taking sides. I, 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 I am not taking sides because I'm not a spokesman for President Buhari, nor am I a spokesman for, you know, Chief Justice. Or okay. I think they All have right. their spokespeople. All right. Let me, let me, let me, let me um, ask this question by Sir Um the Chief Justice of Nigeria is the highest ranking legal officer in the country. And then in terms of disciplining um, those in legal profession, particularly at the bench, he also provide, I mean, presides over the NJC. And the procedure we know for disciplining a judge is that there must be an input from the NJC in terms of recommendation. I mean, there are several authorities and cases in that regard. Now that the CGN has admitted to having these monies or owning these accounts, what would have been the best option to handle this matter without necessarily hitting up the, pop, uh, the polity and then politicizing it as it is now? Thank you. The rule of law is the bedrock of democracy. So the best way to have solved this issue is to fall back to rule of law. And what's rule of law in this case? Refer the case to NJC. The Chief Justice of Nigeria is not single-handedly running NJC. And when the, the matter is before NJC, the Chief Justice of Nigeria will vacate his seat. That is the procedure. It's unfortunate. If, if, I don't care what people say outside. I don't care what anybody says. Our president is not the one who is doing all this. No. He doesn't even know what's going on. People are doing it to satisfy their whims and caprices. The man doesn't know what's going on. We saw him on TV. Now, if the matter gets to NJC, NJC will tell him, please, Mr. Honorable CJ, leave the hall. Why are we looking into this matter? It is when they have done that and they find him culpable, they will now recommend to the president, we feel this man is culpable and we ask that he be removed. Again, let everybody hear in Nigeria. The president does not have power to remove him so little on his own. He will refer the matter to the Senate of Nigeria. That is, I believe in the Constitution. I take side because I'm taking side of the law. The President will refer the matter to the Senate. The Senate will vote. If by two third majority of the votes, the Senators agree that the CJM be removed, they will transmit their resolution to the president. It is at that stage the president can remove the CJM. In this case, no such thing has taken place. Today, the distinguished senators of the Republic of Nigeria, the leaders are meeting over this issue. And tomorrow, the whole Senate is converging. And yesterday, your chairman of APC, Ashamole, summoned the APC senators because he knows that the law says senators have a role to play in this matter. What are you summoning senators of APC for on Sunday when you have already suspended the man? Does the Constitution allow the president to suspend the man? I, I am know. taking sides because I am following the law. If you say the man has admitted that, oh, I made a mistake. It is still not the function of the president to remove the man or to suspend him. If you say, oh, the suspension was because you want to do further investigation, what are you investigating when the man is already before the court? Then if you say, oh, well, the president was in a court de sac because the people you will report, him to, will report the CGN to, NJC, is their head. Mm. And two, the lawyers who went to court 
we are obtaining other here and there. When did it become the law that lawyers are not to practice in court? Lawyers can go to court. In fact, in a in a uh, Abiola versus the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Supreme Court ruled that the suspect or the accused person yeah. has a right to any lawyer of his choice. Okay. And there is no limit as to the number of lawyers who can appear in a case. And I can tell you straight away, the CJ has not spent 10 cobalt for any of these things. Why in court? And why am I, I mean, taking sides on this issue? Mm. I am taking sides because the business have a proverb, which I will say in English. The day you decide under man's fate, you are indirectly deciding your own fate. Okay. Today, mm. we decided the case of Justice Ngajiwa. As Ngajiwa versus Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yeah. This same CCT that said this ex party on that question, they <laughs> said <laughs> straight away <laughs> that you cannot bring a judge before us unless you take it before agency. But why was this case taking a different dimension? The law to federal government was insisting that his motion that the CJ advocate seat must be taken with the motion by the senior advocates who were saying, first and foremost, this court does not have jurisdiction. Okay, let me, let me pause you there. Uh, we'll take a short break. We'll be back with you on this discussion. Uh, of course, Brasti uh, Dilek Munidio has some thoughts to share along the line of the last question that I asked against the background that the CGN being the uh, head of the judiciary and also the chairman of the NGC. What options are there in handling this case? He would have been, he we'll would be, have we'll, 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 we'll be back with you in a moment to get more thoughts and opinion on our conversations today on the program TMI. Don't go away. TMI. Every opinion counts. Thanks again for staying with us on the program this morning on ITV. We're on the last lap of our discussions today on the legality of the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. We have the State Secretary of the ADC joining us. Eboni Ideha, many thanks for joining us on the program. Good morning. Okay. Uh, let, let me come to you, Pastor Dilik Benidio. We, we were just on the verge of um, bringing you in when we had to go for that break. Yes. Yes, in line with the question that I asked, uh, what, what are your thoughts? What options um, are there to explore uh, that would have made it uh, for us to avoid this you know, heating up of the polity right now? Well, um, I think that, you know, in this sort of thing, as, as, a, as a junior lawyer, I will, I will <laughs> adopt, you know, because I'm not taking sides, so I will adopt <laughs> the, the, the position that has been taken by Leonard's, Leonard lawyers, senior lawyers to me, who have more knowledge, more experience, more exposure, and who are more celebrated. Like, uh, is it Chief Femi Falana, Mr. Femi Falana had mentioned that the, the CGN ought to resign. He ought to resign because uh, the, the, the mess is just too much, you know, and um, it's not going to end very soon. It's not going to end soon. And no matter which way you look at it, sometimes you have to sacrifice for the greater good. Um, so that is on one point. Now, as, as the chairman of the NJC, for him to step aside while the NJC is meeting, it already creates an impression as if he is not, um, is not welcome. I mean, imagine you are chairman of, of, of a body of such eminent people, chief judges of states, high-level lawyers, people of, of captains of industry, and because you have been investigated, you have to leave the meeting. So it's just that in Nigeria, we are, we are and again, I'm not, you know, it doesn't, either way, um, I'm not leaning on any side. But in Nigeria, we, are, we have a, an attitude that is sit tight. You know, a governor was alleged to have been collecting bribes. He was put on video. He said, no, I'm not moving. He went to court, got, a, got an order against the House of Assembly. Don't investigate me. You know, all kinds of things. Nobody acts as a man or, 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 of honor. 
to say, you know what, this thing is, you know, it shouldn't be. You must set an example. Okay. You must set an example. Are you, are you bothered about the seeming selectivity in dealing with these issues? Selectivity, selectivity no... in the sense that you just made reference to the case involving oh, a certain you... governor who is alleged to have been collecting bribes on tapes. And then uh, there is a court order not to for the state assembly yes. not to investigate yes. him uh, yes. against against the background. Just, because yeah. I, I remember I asked you a question earlier. Yeah. Uh, this CGN issue, yeah. in your opinion, if this is in tandem with the fight against corruption, and you said yes, but uh, yes, that, yeah. that's why I made yeah, the question yeah, my, about selectivity. No, there's no selectivity here because in that case you had the House of Assembly doing their job, okay. and then this same judiciary was the one that said. Don't, don't go ahead. Okay. This same judiciary. Yeah. Now, and the idea is, why is the judiciary always very, very quick, you know, to issue these orders, you know? That, that's, that's the issue. Okay. Uh -huh. Because the House of Assembly was doing their job. Why should you stop the House from doing their job? But that's what happened. So it's not, it's not, it wasn't the problem of the president. That, it had nothing to do with the president. As in this case. Mm. Now, when when this issue became i mean you can have skeletons in your cupboards but once the skeletons come out as we expect these things will happen in the year of light mm. uh -huh. <laughs> you take you take responsibility you do the needful our country must move forward the country has been has been um, you know, corruption is too laden in the country. Okay. Let's, let me push it and let's. let's but bring, again, remember, yeah, I'm yeah. not taking sides. <laughs> That's like a, sing, sides. like a sing song. That you are, you are saying that. Let me get your thoughts. Let me get let me get some of your thoughts on uh, the CGN suspension and the question of legality. I, I, I don't know what what do you make of this with all the whole abalo raised so far. Well, we've had a lot of comments from the legal perspective. But for me, I look at it from two angles. I look at it at the morality angle and the constitutional angle. Well, uh, the CGN has been alleged, in quotes, that he has uh, had uh, the seen uh, so much amount of money in his account that he didn't uh, declare. declare his uh, assets completely before the Code of Conduct uh, Bureau and all of that. So there are some discrepancies. Uh, well, on the basis of that, we also know that the Constitution also stipulates the areas in which such cases could be dealt with by referring such issues to the NGC, which is the body that is uh, supposed to look at such issues and make recommendations for suspension or, or whatever to the presidency then, if need be, or which is constitutional, he sends it to the, House of, the National House of Assembly for them to kind of like deliberate on it and make a, a uh, a passive vote of no confidence or whatever and apparently ask the chief judge to step down. But you see, we need to look at it from two angles. In terms of morality, morality in the constitution, there's no way in the constitution that they said once uh, you have been alleged that we should crucify you. It's wrong. We must look at it, we must, we must take every case based on its merit and demerit. Then you now come down to the Code of Conduct Tribunal. You see, for me, as a, for we as a political party, our worry is this. For every election, you worry about the process. When you now cast aspersions on the process itself, the process loses credibility. I'm not here to speak for uh, or against. It's not, it's not a political thing. It's more of a constitutional thing. We must be very, very careful. Because when you have three arms of government, the judiciary, the uh, uh, executive, executive, and the legislature, and they are all independent of each other. Are supposed to be independent of each other. They ought to be. Okay. But in a situation whereby the president now usurps his, the powers of the judiciary, that is, you see, we should be very careful. You can see on the pages of newspapers now, and people make different agitations, and we need to look at it critically. Tomorrow, the uh, National House Assembly, they are going to convene, and the NGC is about meeting right now and the NBA, they are all meeting. You see, we need to manage this because you now see the, the position of the, the international community. International community. So we are in, to be honest with you, uh, Nigeria is in a state of equigbeya, as far as I'm concerned. It's terrible. We, we need to look at things objectively. And if you come to look at it, 
Because one, perception matters a great deal. I'll give you an example. If you find out, looking, uh, uh, looking at the uh, scenario, how Onoge came in, remember, he was not confirmed by the president. That lingered on for a very long time. And it was also trampling on our constitution. Before people started making so many uh, 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 utterances, putting pressure on the presidency. And remember, Osibadio had to fly to, the, to London to get permission from the president to, to install uh, Onoge as uh, the CGN. And if you look at the statement that the president uh, laid, out, laid down, it gives you room to be very suspicious, even if we don't want to be. Because they have, you, you see, expression is what more than a thousand words. Your body language. You look at the merits and the merits of the case at the, at the, at the, at the CCT. You, you two people to court. These are lawyers here. And people are supposed to kind of like have a defense for or against. And once already challenged the jurisdiction of the court to hear that matter, I'm not a lawyer. But at least for every common sense to challenge that matter. And normally, once jurisdiction has been challenged, and in fairness to the chairman of the CCT, he, he adjourned the matter for them to come to come and address the court on the 28th. Then on the 23rd, you issue uh, an expected order. order asking for the, 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 the CGN to step aside and if, from what I've heard, from the, pip, uh, the, the, the order, it was not even stated that the president should even suspend the, and even if it's stated in the constitution, you see, our creed is constitution. It's like you here, because asking us to alter the Lord's Prayer. We, you see, funny enough, what we must look at is this. You see, most times when we Nigerians come to talk about issues, we look at it from one particular angle. For me, my right has been infringed upon as a Nigerian because that's our creed. The constitution binds all of us together because from the first line of that constitution, it says we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And on the 23rd of, 29th of May, 2015, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria swore to uphold the constitution a, uh, regardless of his personal interest that he must always uphold the constitution. So those are the, those are the issues that we must critically look at. And looking at it from this other angle, we are, we are close to uh, less than a month to election. to election. And once you cast aspersions on an electoral process, already we've been having issues with INEC. You look at, look at the uh, elections in the Kitian Ocean. Look at what happened. Then you're not coming. We had issues with, uh, uh, what, what, we had issues with uh, uh, this lady that they said, uh, was uh, I mean, as a I mean, as a that one, that one was there. We talked about uh, 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 the, uh, the political parties went to INEC having issues about uh, the procedures, guidelines for elections. That is there. They now come up with this. And if you look at the way and manner, the timing, too, you must be cautious about timing. You see, Nigerians, we need to be very sensitive. And at times, too, it's so painful that. Uh, for me, for we as a political party, we are looking at it from a very broader perspective, irrespective of what we belong to the political party. The first thing we must realize is this: we are Nigerians. Okay, okay. Let me let me pause it there because uh, well, you just came just... in and I needed to allow you to uh, embellish yourself in the discussion. But uh, there's a point that yeah. we are missing out. Yeah, you know, yeah. apparently we are missing out or confusing. Okay. Again, I agree with. You know, both of them, as you know, that I'm not, I'm not taking sides, so, but I, I support ah, their position. Ah, no. You know, however, there's a difference between suspension and removal. The law requires that the CGM will be removed from office if he's after he has been found guilty, um, or the president can, you know, address the Senate. And the Senate can vote no, by no, two no, thirds. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just hold on. Just and the, the Senate can vote by two thirds majority to remove him. That that is the process. That is the removal. Okay. Suspension is a different thing. Now, um, I think this issue was also thrown up when Sanusi, uh, just got of appeal, was suspended during Jonathan's time uh, by by President Jonathan, and there was an agitation as to, oh, can Jonathan do this? Can Jonathan not do that? As the CBN governor. 
No, no, PC, 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 I'm not taking sides with any of at this point. None of us is taking sides. But but the point is that when when Salami um, uh -huh. was removed, reference was had to Section 11 of the Interpretation Act, which in a way gives credence to the argument that if you have power to recommend, then you have power to suspend. <laughs> yes, even people like Jose Kome, uh Falana at that time argued it that yes, he has power, he has power, and he did it and got away with it. Obviously now, the same people are on the other side saying, no, it doesn't have power, it doesn't have power. So now, but, but the point is, um, when a situation like this happens, what, what is the next recourse? I think that we should be patient enough to await the outcome My little bro, I must tell you straight. No, no, no. It's no, my side, space. My side, it's my It went to the Barrister Barrister AP, so Just hold on so that, can, so that our viewers can get maximum yes. benefit of our analysis. Yeah. Now, the, 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 there is no stipulation as to when a matter, and of course I can, I can be corrected, I will still yes. correct it. There is no stipulation as to the timing, the time period in which a matter should be referred to the NGC. Mm. Now, I believe that the President is still within his powers to refer the matter to the NGC. However, he cannot, and I think this is the problem, he can't refer it because it is the chairman who convenes the meeting of the NJC. Mm. And the, the owner there is the chairman of the NJC. Mm -hmm. So it is he who is okay, let us look at this matter yes. tomorrow or next year. Mm. So that is the conundrum. Okay. We have never come into this situation. Really, America has been practicing their constitution for more than how many years now? Three, four hundred years or so. Mm -hmm. We are all is just uh, nothing, mm. you know, very close. Very but. close yeah. So as we are practicing it, we are getting better at it. Now, another point I want to make is that, with all due respect, I, I don't take sides, <laughs> but, 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 but we have to call a spade I don't a take sides. I don't take sides. I don't take sides. I don't take sides. Can you answer the point? Uh, yeah, the, point, point I can, I can yes. uh, the point is this. Yes. The, the Constitution provides that, like you have said, the arms of government should be independent. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we find that, in practice, the judiciary does not maintain its independence. Whenever the governor wants to do an inauguration, you see judges there. Whenever the president wants to do one or two things, you see judges there. How will you be independent? Picture that I've been shown now on social media is with Wike and one of you know, having a tete a tete. That already gives an impression to somebody who is on the other side. Okay, so. Uh, by please, Thomas, please. Name. Now, let me speak. Speak. <laughs> speak. <laughs> there is no way in our constitution where any president, has right to whether Buhari or Jonathan, has, right has power to suspend, suspend a judicial officer. If it is a state high court judge, it, the governor cannot. He has to make a recommendation to the state assembly. I'm talking about the constitution. Which is supreme to Bible and Quran. If it is at federal level, the president has to make recommendation to the Senate. Those who judge the question are not daft. They know if I have a bachelor who will come tomorrow and want to usurp all powers. They know. That is why they put all those things there to act as checks and, and balances. balances. This president has usurped the constitution, he has overturned the constitution. There is no way in the constitution that empowers Buhari to suspend the CJN or any judge whatsoever. And, and in the case of Salami, which my left friend mentioned, yes, NJC deliberated on that matter in extenso. In extenso means extensively. Before Jonathan took the wrong step. You cannot rely on the wrong step as a president for the current one. After all, the Supreme Court that gave the case judgment in Shagari, I don't know what I said, Shagari, on to tell of, of a human being. Let out to those 
not to cite that authority again that it was given to allow the military to go. You don't use one black president for another, for another one. <coughs> The president is wrong, and I stand to say he's wrong. Okay, let me, let me, uh, Dehan, you, you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, yes. Mm. You see, we have to be very careful when we talk about constitutional matters, and we shouldn't allow our emotions and sentiments, you know, be cloud our reasoning and judgment. It's a very critical issue. Critical in the sense that <laughs> it's very, it's, for me, it's very painful that I have know, Ni Nigerians are being hoodwinked, looking at it from different angles and all of that. One, we're in a democracy, and we must defend this democracy by any means necessary. Why? Because if you look at what is now happening, like he rightly said, we need to cleanse our system, both the executive judiciary and the legislature. You look at what has, most times we keep, seem to forget what has been happening all this while that has led to the quagmire we are now. We need to look at those things critically, irrespective of the fact that I'm a politician and I belong to a political party, which I was saying ever since that first and foremost, we must realize that we are Nigerians and if we must speak the truth and we must speak truth to power. If Onoge supposedly has been alleged to have had some infractions in terms of not like we rightly are aware of, well, morally, people might have or be of the opinion that he should resign and step aside. But contrary to that, he has his own fundamental uh, right to also defend himself. It's like me saying, uh, I caught somebody in the market. Does that give me the justification to just put a tire on him, on him and lead the tire and burn him to death? I would fault the NGC and I would fault the executive on this issue. It's a function of going through the right channel. And we have the constitution. So it also brings about the issue of desperation by the ruling class to cling and hinge to power by all means. Don't God forget, bless you. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. don't, for, don't forget. If you look at the issue whereby legislators initially wanted to reorder the Election. voting pattern that the president should stay on his own because of his becoming Interest. unpopular. If you look at the elections before 2015, everybody was putting Buhari on their, on their poster, side by side. Mm, sorry, I think, is he not going outside no, just, the, just, just, yes, outside no, the no, point no, no, now? Hold Okay, all right. Now, <laughs> no, no, I, I look at things from a broader perspective. Mm, okay. They couldn't get that. That was why they felt you can see the defection from one part, two party to the other. Then after that, if you remember, they tried also to also distort the House of Assembly. National Assembly. The National Assembly, sorry. The National Assembly. Then the judiciary. Why all these distortions? So this, this, this is a pattern. You're it's, a pattern. Pattern. Hmm. it's a pattern. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. You don't tell a, a blind man that it is raining. When there's too much debt in the soup, it will know it's not it's not me. Okay. It is a situation of whereby mm -hmm. very soon mm -hmm. the bush meat will be after the, the hunter. That is where we are now. All right. Um, uh, let's let's uh, cap it up now because our, our time is up. But the point I want us to conclude with is we're here now. Yes. Is there any end in sight? And what implications for the country, democracy, against the background that we have just, we have elections in, in less than uh, a month. Yes, from, from, I will tell you straight away. Yes, I will yes. tell you straight away. The end we are going to see is 100% dictatorship. Why will have this way? The international community already on our neck. 
So votre élection se conduite en février. Dites à la communauté vous n'avez pas accepté. He will stop on not I don't speak to him. He is not the one. It is it is the people around him. When uh, uh, Baba Chilawal was said to have used 280 million to clear grass, did Baba Chilawal resign? When the other man used DSS to go on event National Assembly, did the man resign? When the VP asked him to go, he is not the VP. So your question specifically are answered because of time. They, those surrounding Buhari will stop only click to their self-interest of having a pliable Tanko Mohamed Yassi to pick judges that they can use in the election tribunal. Yeah, but they've been, they've been inaugurated. Yes! Yeah, they've been and, inaugurated are you aware? Are you aware? They were picked no, by another, another, Excuse me! Another constitution. Excuse me! No, 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 these are new ones! No, 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 these are new ones! No! no, 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 no they are new ones! Another, 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 with the players, they threw his uh, uh, media aid and said he went to court on Friday that by, by Tuesday or, or I think Tuesday if I'm not mistaken that is also if, if I may just finish yes. 10 of those ones that Tanko has put there 10 are dead people I'm telling you right now you will see to this papers okay let's let's then, let's, let's, let's therefore yeah. the people following Buhari will historically all right um, and okay. at the end okay. we will be in trouble okay. Okay. We need you. well uh, I, I am a, I am an optimistic man mm. and I, I believe in, 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 in that we are marching forward as a country all of these things ultimately we coagulate together to move the country forward. Um, we've never had it before that the Chief Justice of the Federation would be in this kind of uh, situation. Mm. Now we are having it. We will learn from it, lessons to be learned, okay. and then we move forward. Okay. Irrespective right. of whoever becomes president, and this is a lesson. We now know what to do All right. in uh, a situation like this. Yeah. Like my elder one just said, it's uh, for for uh, for Nigeria. It's a learning process, mm. but uh, it would uh, uh, have been able to cast a lot of aspersion on the electoral process. Mm. That is my worry. Uh, we, we should be able to be patient a little bit. Let's see the outcome of what would happen at the uh, House of a, a National Assembly mm. by tomorrow. Okay. Then maybe the fallout from what the NGC would have. Uh, decided, decided today. today. Okay, would, that's, uh, that's, that's just a beautiful way to uh, call it a wrap on the discussion segment on TMI Monday. It's a wait and see game, but there are concerns about the implications of all of these for the 2019 elections. But just like our panelists have said, we'll keep our fingers crossed and see and hope for the best for this country.